Yes, God is good. And all the time. God is good once again. Uh, we want to thank God for the opportunity we have this week. I want to be welcoming you for the whole week. I was worried that if I we start off this morning, then to a large extent we may miss those who will come in the evening. But you can be informing your friends that they be coming. I don't know how you've been since the camp meeting. The last time we were together was the, the camp meeting. Uh, I'm glad that we are able to meet today. I traveled overnight. I believe that as we share the word of God, we'll have some time together and we will be blessed. I want us to have a word of prayer as we delve into our study today. Let's believe and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the privilege of being able to meet with your children. We pray that may your spirit take control over your man servant. May you put your words in my mouth. May you use me as a vessel that all the things we shall share may have a deep connection with our souls and may bring a converting experience. For this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, so we want to look at uh, marriage and uh, as we're looking at marriage and courtship which is actually the social life I want us to use it to look at it in seven very important steps. We have how many days? We have tonight will be day one no this is day one tuesday night is going to be day two isn't it day three when is the morning day four when is the night day five that's the morning day six that's the night day seven friday morning day eight i think that they, they will have to come in place today we can just do an introduction so that i don't leave the others behind then uh, we will cover the rest. I believe by the time we will be done, we will have covered the whole series. So if, if you've never heard anything about uh, courtship and marriage and social life, perhaps this week uh, is the time when you will learn some of these things a lot more in depth. So we will look at the seven steps to a happy what? A happy marriage. So we are not looking at, uh, we are not dealing with people who are married. We are dealing with people who want to get what? married and some of the the seven steps that you need to follow uh to be able to get to a happy marriage and uh, i think this is very important as a study and i want us to view this study in connection with the sanctuary you know when you read daniel 8 14 the bible says thy way O god is in the what is in the sanctuary uh that is actually not daniel 8 14 daniel 8 14 says and unto 2,300 days and the sanctuary shall be what? Shall be cleansed. Now we need to understand that the only way you can understand courtship well is when you look at courtship in harmony with what Jesus is doing right now. Most of the time our studies of marriage and courtship are for laughter and fun. And I can tell you to a large extent when I attend seminars where young people are being taught about courtship and marriage, uh, you wish that you were not uh, able to have those classes within the church. Because the ministers make it look like it's a joke. It's some, some kind of uh, funny entertainment. But actually, did you know that whatever God is doing in heaven right now, what Christ is doing in the most holy place, must actually be in association with what we are doing on earth. We know that as we are living right now, we are living at the time of the investigative what? Judgment. I believe you've done some prophecy. You've had a prophecy week? I know the first years who may be here. When was the last prophecy week that you had? Was it this semester? Did you cover the sanctuary? Amma, what did you cover? What was in the prophecy? Not yet. So the first years may not really understand but one thing i want you to understand is that the way of god is in the sanctuary the way of god means the plan of redemption so if we are going to look at courtship and marriage then we must look at courtship and marriage in harmony with god's plan and that is the reason why i want to just make this statement as we are beginning do you know that courtship and marriage is part of god's original plan in the bible when he created man 
The Bible says in Genesis, if you read Genesis 1 verse 26, you can cover with me your Bible as we move. The Bible says, and God said, let us now make man in our own image and after our own likeness and let him have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the fall of the air, over the cattle, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God made man in his own image. The understanding is, the real reason why Adam and Eve were created was that the image and character of God may actually be seen in their relationship. That is the reason why Satan is attacking marriage as an institution. There is nothing that Satan is angry with more than marriage, maybe Sabbath. Because Sabbath and marriage are the only institutions that Adam and Eve came out of Eden with. Did you know that? The only two things they left Eden with was what? Marriage and the Sabbath. The other things they left. So if they left with marriage and the Sabbath, Satan hates anything that is connected to the Sabbath and is connected to marriage. And that's the reason why we realize that marriage is not a problem. By the way, marriage is not a really a problem when you are married. Marriage is a problem when you marry the wrong person. So where do problems in marriage begin? It is before you get married. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. By the way, most people tend to think that the problems and complications people have in marriage begin when you are in... If, if, if you married the right person, you will solve the problems. Amen? Because the problems that arise in marriage are problems that arise in any relationship. But if you did not marry the right person, you did not have your rib that was given to you, you did not have a common understanding... Then even if you get married, even if you are a church member, even if you believe in God, you will suffer the results of marrying. I would rather you die an old maid than marry a wrong man. That didn't sink in. Amen? You'd rather die a what? Than marry? By the way, do you know that the pain of marrying the wrong person is much more bitter than the pain of staying single for a long time. <laughs> it's much more bitter. Because you come to us preachers, all we can do is just pray for you until you persevere. Yeah, there's not, we can't tell you to leave your husband or leave your wife. And that's why we need to know that this is a very important thing. They, Satan is attacking marriage. And actually if you check, there are books that you need to read before entering a marriage and relationship or courtship. And these are some of the books that I'm going to recommend this week. Actually, I'm going to cover some of them in our studies. One of them is, of course, the Bible. You need to understand the Bible's concept about this. We will look at some of that. Then there is a book called Letters to Young Watch. Before I got into courtship, I read that book. Do not enter a relationship before you understand that book called Letters to Young Lovers, cover to cover. Then there's a book called Adventist Home. Adventist Home covers a lot of things about courtship and marriage, especially when you begin from chapter 6. Chapter 6 is called The Great Decision. It tells you about how to make choices. I would rather you don't enter courtship before reading that book. Then there is testimonies on sexual behavior, adultery, and divorce by Ellen White. It, it talks about how God views the sin of immorality and, and, and what brings about divorce and, and, and adultery and how God views them. Number five is Ministry of Healing. Ministry of Healing is a very important book for anybody who wants to get into courtship because it will tell you about how to overcome passion and how to live a, a healthful life. Then Messages to Young People. This is the book that got me baptized, by the way. Messages to Young People. After reading that book, I went to my pastor and said I want to be baptized. No one preached to me, by the way. That is the book that got me to be baptized and actually turned me to a preacher. You'd rather read that book. <laughs> and we have uh, Youth, Are You Preparing for Your Divorce by Colin D. Standish. Standish is one of the founders of a, an institution abroad. 
that right now uh, is dealing with training medical missionaries and, and Bible workers. I don't know how many know which school that is. Do you know where Standish, what's, where Standish was, was found? It's this man called Collins, this Standish. Anybody who's heard of him? I'm going to give you a, that is a research for you. By evening, you need to have found out where Colin D. Standish, which school did he start off. Then we have Preparing for Marriage by W.D. Frazee. Frazee started which institution? Anyone? Yeah, someone, you're almost saying it. Which one? Find out which one. W.D. Frazee and Colin D. What? They, are, they have schools that they have left where people are trained. Actually, I'm a student in one of those schools. Find out which schools they are. So one thing you need to know is that these are books you need to read before you enter into marriage because they are very important. Now, these are divorce statistics that I want us to look at as we go. Did you know that by, by 1900, uh, divorces were, were, were in, the, in the rate that I want you to, to, to view uh, over here? This is up to 2,000. So, in marriages, out of all the marriages that are present, 12.7, out of every one marriages, 12.7 ended up to be successful. When you go to 1940, you realize that out of uh, marriages, there was, there was a divorce rate that went to about 6%. And if you look at 1990, out of every single marriages, there were divorces that were moving on higher. I don't know if the way I placed these statistics is, is what is not clear. It's, it's vice versa. Yeah, out of 12.7 marriages, I think that is the way I'm supposed to read it. There was one divorce. You get the point? So meaning out of six, there was one divorce. Out of two, there is one divorce. Meaning today, out of every two marriages, there is one divorce. Technically, what they are saying is that 50% of those who are married divorce. Right now in 2022, this has gone higher. They are saying it's between 60 to 70% of those who are married end up being divorced. And by the way, 50% of those divorces take place in the first two years. The first two what? Two years. And there was one I, I, I was checking the other day. They are saying 80% of marriages, the people who are married have sexual partners that they are actively involved with out of the marriage. 80%. Now, isn't that serious? Meaning people who are married are not faithful to their what? To their spouses. And this is something that is happening all over the world. And these are some of the problems. Have you heard women or men say that Mwanaume, Mwanaseba ni Wi-Fi, ama? Is it Mwanaume ndiyo Wi-Fi, ama ni Mwanamke? Mwanamke ndiyo Wi-Fi. Na Mwanaume? Ni hotspot. Whatever it is. But there's a, there's, there's, there's a big problem in how people perceive marriage. I have even met men who tell me that you cannot, you cannot live without a girlfriend on the side when you're married. Meaning you're married but you have a girlfriend at work. You have a girlfriend at uh, your local place. You have a girlfriend in the office. These are some of the problems. So that is why 50% of all marriages end in what? In divorce. And I want to guarantee you something, by the way. Don't say in your mind that it can't happen to you. <laughs> Just this... Uh, time I had, I had gone to visit a friend of mine in, in Mombasa. I had known them. They, they had been close friends of mine for a long time. Both of them were in ministry. I just realized when we were coming from a meeting and he was taking his children to a different house. You know the, the way you can spend the Sabbath. So I was wondering, I'm a drop up with you so is when he told me, by the way, my wife and I separated from 2017. So, I don't know, 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 I don't know,
Yeah, na kuja badai kuachukua. So don't think in your mind that this can't happen to you. I don't know if you are together. Normally when you are teaching young people and you are telling them the problems in marriage, marriage is a place where a lot of people who are there want to go out and a lot of people who are out there want to come in. <laughs> Personally, I'm married and one thing I can tell you, if you are getting married, at least, at least to the best of your ability, marry the right person. We are together. Because marriage requires a lot of understanding, a lot of patience, a lot of prayer. And if your partner does not appreciate these things, you will go crazy. And if you are in ministry, you may even stop preaching. You, you heard what I'm saying? You may even do it. Stop preaching. That is the reason why what we are studying this week is very important. And I'm just doing an introduction. So we need to know in, from Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 504, we are told... There is not one marriage in 100 that results happily. Now that is Sister White. There is not one marriage in how many? 100. Now are you seeing how that statistic is so high? That results happily that bears the sanction of God and places the partners in a position better to glorify Him. Now if there is not one marriage in 100... Can you just marry anyone you meet? Etu unajua nilikutana na ukijana, tukaanza, haka nipenda tu, campus, tuka nini, etu tuna, I mean people are telling me they met a lady, now they are getting married in two weeks. And by the way, you need to understand, most of the courtships that happen in the world today, God has no place. It is Satan who is arranging them. Who is doing it? It is Satan who is doing it. Huh? Then you call the pastor. Naruka ruka apo, you put the wrong music. You dress funnily. You jump up and down. You eat wrongly. Huh? Yeah? Then afterwards you go and leave. You spend so much money. You, you, you begin your marriage with a, with, a, with a loan or a debt. Because you want to show the whole world. No. There are some serious problems that we have today. So she's saying out of a hundred, not one. The evil consequences of poor marriages are numberless. They are numberless. They are contracted from impulse. Meaning they are not conducted. Any vijana wingi, they don't sit down to carefully consider. And even when we come like this to teach, you will find that our counsel sometimes is always thrown up out. I was telling someone, by the way, I have had a lot of time to talk to students about marriage and courtship. And usually they would rather learn from experience than from the word of God. You will tell them that they are not ready for courtship, they will court. <laughs> you will tell them they are not ready now to take a step like this, that is what they will do, until their heart broken. Then they will come and tell him to Mishi Joshua. And you will be okay. Iyo wakati ya tungeona. But the interesting thing is now you can make changes. In marriage you can't. And that is why we are told they are contracted from impulse. A candid review of the matter is scarcely thought of. And consultation with those of experience is considered old fashioned. So you will realize that a lot of young people don't even want to know what their parents think. They don't want to know what the people who are experienced think. They just want to get married because it's funny. I tell, I was sharing in a, in a mega rally in Mombasa. I was just from Mombasa yesterday. And I was telling uh, the young people there that, do you know Satan can convince you that you need a man right now? When what you need now is a degree. There is one statement I, I tell most people, I don't know where it came from. It took it over campus, took on a degree in bill. <laughs> huh? All that should be dependent on God. All that should be dependent on God. You need to really understand very importantly, Satan can convince you that what you need now is a man, and what you need now is a woman. And do you know where the conviction is coming from? Twitter? TikTok? How many of us here are on TikTok and Instagram? You don't have to raise your hand. 
but TikTok and Instagram is full of small girls dancing, isn't it? With bikinis and and, and, and those are the things you feed your mind. Sooner or later, you realize that your orientation and thought process is, the, is in the same way, by the way. In fact, listen to what she says, messages to young people, page 450. This is very important. I want us to mark this. Courtship has carried on in this age is a scheme of deception. Courtship has carried on in this age is a scheme of deception and hypocrisy with which the enemy of souls has far more to do than the Lord. Meaning most of the courtship practices that happen in campus today, that happen in the world today, who is behind them? It is Satan actually. Good common sense is needed here if anywhere, but the fact is it has little to do in the matter. Where you need more common sense is when you are choosing a partner for marriage, but where do you use it less? It is where it is used the least. And Satan wants it that way. Satan is busy engaged in influencing those who are holy and suited to each other to unite their interests. Nanya nawa push. It is Satan. And let me tell you, Satan can push you to the point that you are convicted that the person you are getting married to is the real person. I'm not talking about him pushing you to mwa mtu kwa club. Nyote mkokani? But he's the one pushing you. Nyinyi wawili. Mkuje pamoja. He exalts in this work. For by it he can produce more misery and hopeless woe to the human family than by exercising his skill in any other what? Direction. That is testimonies for the church. Uh, volume 2, page 248. What I'm saying is this. Do you know that there is nothing that can make you unhappy in your whole life like a woman or a man who is just in your home trying to make your life miserable? Let me give you an example. There was a time I was going somewhere and I, I took an Uber. And I think the man in the Uber had a problem with his wife. And he didn't even wait for me to get in the car. Akaanza kuongea kama analia eti mke wangu ananitesa silali sikuli have not enyewe alikuwa na kama lose weight he does not even think and he was asking me what can i do aje niuliza jina yangu i've just gotten to the uber you know you know the way the uber inaweza kuja hivi shuke hivi na akaanza kunimwagia kila kitu anashinda akitoroka narudi kwao na nikiwa na pesa ananipenda Nikikosa pesa kidogo hivi anatoroka. It is easy anatoroka, ashiki simu yako, anambia nipe simu yako. <laughs> Nikamwambia simu yangu, akapigia bibi yake na hiyo simu yangu. Akashika. So vile alishika akasikia sauti yake akakata. Akasema ona anakata, kuna namba nyingine tena. <laughs> I don't know if you're getting the situation. <laughs> Nikamwambia ni kuna namba nyingine but I think you're going you're going this the wrong way. Uh, your wife must really be pissed with you <laughs> and it does not want you to talk to her, to her like this you need to find a better way of dealing with this akaniambia nimeongea na mama yake nimeongea na akapigia anti yake akapigia mwingine akaniambia he's tired he can't eat he can't sleep he can't do everything and he's telling me that that anaona akiendelea hivi is going to divorce naambia you don't need to rush like that are you are you the cause of the you need to analyze this issue so well akaniambia Sijalala vizuri for the last two weeks. Jukwa ubongo wangu siwezi fanya nini? I can't sleep. I can't work. What was affecting this man so much? It was his wife. And was his wife a demon? No. <laughs> the problem is that they may have been mated, but they are not matched. Do you know you can be married to somebody who just does not like your jokes? I don't know if you're getting what I mean. So when you get married, every time you make a joke that you think mnafa kufurahia, anakwambia wewe ni mjinga aje. Hizo ndio vitu unasema. I don't know if you're getting my, my perception. And that is why Satan is influencing those who are holy and suited to each other 
No, j just go up. I'm just on that quotation. To unite their interests. So you are not suited to each other. Yeni kusema ukweli ya mwezi ishi ya mfai kuishi pamoja. But he wants to bring you together. And that is why we teach courtship. Because it is in courtship that you can know somebody to whom you are, you are suited. I don't know if I'm making sense. By the way, <laughs> let me give you an example. Even in our own ministry, there are women we used to preach with when, we were, when I was still single. But there are some of them that I couldn't get married to, yet we preached together. We were preaching the Sabbath together. My nation and mini Sabbath. Yeah, we were preaching health reform together, meaning they are health reformers. But there are reasons why I would not want to get married to them. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, because some of them had a temper that I could not handle. You get. At the end of the day, you are looking for the suitability you have with a partner. And that is why I'm telling you there are things that you need to learn about courtship and marriage. And by the way, do not get involved with a lady or a man simply because they are nice. Every lady can do that. Even Jezebel can do that. What do you mean? You think Jezebel did not wash Ahab's hands and give him food? <laughs> Those are not the main things you are looking at when you are quoting someone. It is not the fact that they, they have a nice smile or, or they talk nicely or they give you money or whatever it is, now you owe them. When it comes to marrying someone, even a child is not a reason to marry someone. Peter. Don't marry someone because you have their child. Yeah, I have met people who and I say it says I'm pregnant. Now it ability to know you may be making the biggest what? Because if love is not there, you will you will have the child, but the two of you will be at war for the rest of your life. Remember, a child is a product of marriage. A child should not be a reason for marriage. Yo bado ime mapita. Tuko pamoja. A child is a what? Is a product of marriage. And that is why we even tell people who are married that when you're married, your husband is still more important to you than your children. Never put more emphasis on your children when they come than your husband because they will grow and go. But you and your husband, you remain. Making sense? Let's go a little further, then we see how to sum up, so that I don't take everything away from those who are coming in the evening. So what is the purpose of marriage? The purpose of marriage is to blend two different personalities into the image of God. It is to blend two different personalities into the image of God. Actually, Genesis 24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. One flesh, that one flesh in Hebrew is ehad. Ehad means that they, you have a common character, a common purpose, a common objective. One flesh does not simply mean you are joined by the hips. It simply implies that you, you have a common understanding that you want to portray the image and character of God. So one thing I want, to, I want us to understand this morning that is very clear. What is the reason why we are getting married? I want that to sink in our heads from what we've just read. Why are we getting married? To blend two people into the image. So why are we getting married? For the glory of God. Amen. I want that to sink in your mind. Let no one come and teach you that you are getting married to have children. There are some people who will get married and not be blessed with children. The motivation for marriage should not be what? Children. Children will come. We thank God it's a blessing. But that is not the real reason why you are getting married. I know some of some people are telling me I'm getting married 
to this handsomeness, guess that I may have handsome children. Or I may have beautiful children. I know of ladies who are looking for Azungus, a lot of them in Kenya today, so that they may have Mzungu children. You get the point? The, that is not the real reason. The real reason you are getting married is not so that you get married to a wealthy person. I have seen families who advise their daughters to strategically position themselves to a man who has money or is part of a big organization. And they tell you, pale nyumbani eti, tembea po karibu na kwake, as in, try to be next to that man. They try to urge you to look for a wealthy person. I'm not saying it is wrong to marry a wealthy person. Amen? <laughs> but what I'm saying, it should not be the motivation for what? For marriage. Imagine you're not even getting married for sex, by the way. A lot of young people think that when you get married, you're getting married for sex. By the way, to be honest with you, go and ask a lot of married men. A lot of married men will tell you there is not so much sex when people are married. That is going over your heads. Nani <laughs> Pata? Yeah. Since you asked for a social week, we have to talk. You get me? There is not so much sex in what? In marriage. Because marriage, when you get married, you begin, you know, when, when you are in courtship, the reason why there is so much about sex in your mind is because there is not so much responsibility on your head. Right there, I tell people, in marriages where sex is the only thing people think of, it's either they are lazy partners, you get me, or they really have nothing to do. But when there's a responsibility, you have to take care of the kids, you have to teach the children, you want to homeschool them, you want to have time for prayer, mnaiteji time ya devotion asubui, time ya devotion jioni, mnafanya kazi, you want to do some projects za kujenga, you want to do some other things. Where do you get all the time here, sex killer wakati? It won't be there. But if it is there, you enjoy it because you are doing it in an environment that gives glory to God. By the way, I want you to understand that very clearly. Marriage is not for what? For sex. A lot of young people are saying, it is nikipata kuoa, now I'll be having sex the way I want. Let me tell you the story of your life. You will really be disappointed. <laughs> yeah? Nam Dafika Pali will be going for a lot of counseling sessions with your pastor or your whatever. That my husband has changed. My wife has what? Has changed. So you need to understand that very importantly. You are getting married for the glory? For the glory of God. And I will actually admonish you that most marriages where people were actively involved in sex before marriage, they do very little when they are married. You'll even be having problems with that because you've done everything. So that is a point you need to really understand. So God designs that every Christian home in its harmony, peace, and love should be a model of the home in heaven. In fulfillment of this ideal, there can be no marriage with unbelievers. The reason why you can't marry an unbeliever, if marriage, if the purpose of marriage is the glory of God, then you must only marry someone who believes in God and believes in the things you believe so that you can share a common understanding of God within that marriage. You cannot marry someone who does not believe in God. Am I making sense? That is very important. For in homes established under the unequal yoke, the shadows are never lifted. And that is why the biggest mistake you can make if you marry someone wrong in the church, the better. But marrying someone who does not even come to your church, does not believe the things you believe, you are going to have the biggest, biggest challenge in your whole life. That is why in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 19 to 21, you will find that in, in, in the yoking of believers, there must be a common interest. Let's check that verse together. Deuteronomy 11, verse 19 to 21. Yeah. Uh huh. You shall teach them your children.
speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house. Uh huh. Uh huh. Continue. Upon thy gates. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now I want to ask a very important question there. When you are married with somebody who does not fear God and believe what you believe, what will you teach your children? Have you gone to these families where unaambiwa mtoto wangu wa kwanza anaenda Pentecostal? Kijana wangu wa kwanza ako Catholic? Lakini mimi na huyu mdogo tuliamua kuenda SDA. Asa mi naona pasta, wea ombea hao wengine wawili, warudi kanisani. What do you think happened? You will find most likely the husband either never used to go to church, or the husband was never a member of the same faith. Am I making sense? Do you know the only legacy you can give your children is not a good job? It's not really a good education. It's a character that is fit for heaven. And the Bible says you will teach your children when you sit in the house, when you walk in the way. The only way the family can portray the character of God, even in the children, is when the harmony that is in the home is in fulfillment with the truth in the word of God. You can never have that in a home where you have an unbelief. But usually when we go for crusades, I actually have the privilege of stabilizing marriages when we are meeting with people who have such problems. And then you meet a woman come and telling you, my husband beats me. Or my husband uh, beats our children. Or, and you're asking her, how can a Seventh-day Adventist husband beat you? And beat your kids? That is not Adventist. Oh, really? He's not Adventist? Yes. You didn't know that before you married him? But Yes. What should we pray for them? What should we pray for? <laughs> that is what we normally ask. What do we ask God? I'm funny. I end. I'm funny. I'm Adventist. You get the problem. Always like that all the time. So get the point that marriage is for this. So I want us to end. With, with, with two more slides, this one and we will look at uh, this and just let's go down. I see which one comes next. Just go back up. Just go back up. We are going to end with... We are going to end with this one. So this is from Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. I think that is where I leave you for now, so that you can go attend your classes. The Bible says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now I just want to put this point very clear. Do you know that marriage, the union between a man and a woman, is an extension of the union between Christ and his church? And this is the real reason why we are told that marriage, the purpose for marriage is to establish the image and character of God to the whole world. The basic unit of societies is the home. All of you who are here are coming from a family. And everything you know, to a large extent, is what your dad and your mother taught you. And over time, what your school taught you, what your church taught you. So the family is the core of society. And that is the reason why God wants the families to be united so that his name is glorified. When you read the Bible in Genesis chapter 6, you will find the children of men began to intermarry with the daughters, the children of God, the sons of God began to intermarry with the children of the daughters of men and that intermarriage brought the flood. You've read the Bible. There was a level of, 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 of immorality and sinfulness that resulted from that union that brought the flood. The same, same way, Jesus, 
Jesus who is the, the husband of the church. When you read the book of Isaiah 54 verse 3. Just turn with me to Isaiah 54 verse 3. Isaiah 54 verse 3. Verse 5, verse 5, 54, verse 5. It says, For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. Uh huh. So the Bible portrays God as the husband to the church. I want us to get this very well. So the Bible says, Thy maker is. Thy husband, thy maker is thy husband. And when you read the book of Jeremiah 6 verse 2, Jeremiah 6 verses 2, yes. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Who is Zion? The church. So Zion is, you know what comely means? Comely means beautiful. I have likened Zion to a beautiful and delicate woman. So meaning God is the husband, the church is the wife. Now I want to ask you a very important question that is very important. Is, has the marriage taken place between Christ and his church? Not yet. What is going on? Yes? Preparation. What is the other word we can call it? Courtship. I don't know if you're getting me. And is Jesus particular about his wife? Because when you read the book of Pro prophecy, you will realize that there are many women who claim to be his. This is very clear in the book of Isaiah chapter 4. Just move with me to Isaiah 4. Yes. Saying, we will eat our own bread. Uh huh. Uh huh. This is an indication that there are several women who will portray themselves as having the name of this man, Jesus, but they are eating their own food, meaning they don't have the bread of life. What is the bread of life? The word of God. And they don't have the righteousness of Christ, which is obtained by faith. They are not obedient to the commandments of God. So these women, which we know is the Babylonian churches, are going to claim that they are connected with Christ, but when he comes, he's not coming for them. He is coming to the true and faithful wife. But the true and faithful wife is portrayed in Revelation 12 as a, vir as a virgin dressed in white apparel. And that white apparel is the righteousness of the saints which indicates the righteousness of Christ. Amen. And that is the reason why we need to understand by the way the men who are here. Courtship is about getting married to somebody who represents the woman in Revelation 12. Amen? And the ladies who are here, getting married to her husband, must be someone who represents the man in Isaiah 54 verse 5. <laughs> who is the man in Isaiah 54 verse 5? By the way, did you know that the word, the word, uh, the word man means virtue. The word man means virtue. Virtue. The word man means virtue in Hebrew. Meaning a man is is virtue. What is virtue? Anybody as we close? What is virtue? So that I show you an example then we just pray. We come back in the... What is virtue? A good character. Let me tell you, by the way, the symbols of a man who is ready for marriage. 
that, that you need to really understand from what we are learning. What are the attributes of God in relation to his church that you know of? He cares, isn't it? He cares to the point he's willing to die for the church. But then, do you know, we normally say a man is willing to die protecting his wife and children. Do you think the men of our generation are willing to do that? Any marriage where your man is your greatest enemy, it is the man who beats the wife and the children. It's the man who abuses the wife and the children. That is a distortion of marriage. Because the wife and the children are supposed to be protected by the man, Jesus gave his life protecting the church. Amen? That is what the man is supposed to be. The second thing about the man, Jesus is what? What is the second thing about the man, Jesus, in relation to the church? He is loving. He is loving and willing to die. I can guarantee you something, ladies. We are going to learn this. Do not, as a woman, get married to a man who does not love you. And that is why we tell ladies, do not initiate. Do not initiate the courtship. Jana nilikuwa nasikia mtu akifunza family life where I was. I was not doing family life there. I was, I was simply preaching. But there was someone who was handling family life. And, and someone asked, is it wrong for ladies to approach a man and tell him unampenda? And then he said, why not? You need to state your position. <laughs> One thing we need to understand, <laughs> the Bible has never said that women love your husbands. The Bible has always said, wives, submit to your husbands. Let the man initiate. You can suggest. You know what suggesting is? Suggesting means you are in the right place at the right time. Bado hata mjanipata. Kuna wanyo wamenipata na wengine wanipata. Suggesting means if, if the man you are looking for is in the choir, be in the what? Be in the choir. Yeah. If the man you are looking for is in some Bible study group, be in that what? Bible study group. If it is God's will, that the two of you end up together, God will put the idea in his mind and he will initiate. But as a woman, don't lower your integrity. Go sit down with a man and tell him, I love you, I want you to quote me. There will be no respect for you in that relationship and there will be no leadership. Who is supposed to lead it now? Come away and you will initiate. Nani kuongoza? You see, you have confused the structure of that man's thought and his process. And that is the reason why, who initiated the courtship that ends in the church being married to Christ? It is Christ himself. You get the point? The same thing with women. So some things I hear being taught, ni hearsay. With no relation from where? <laughs> Bible and spirit of prophecy is very misleading. So how many ladies left that meeting feeling that they're supposed to go and approach their men? And let me tell you something. I, I read this <laughs> in the spirit of prophecy. Mr. White says this and I'll also tell you. Personally, me, if a lady approaches me to initiate a relationship, I will turn it down. Because I consider that a red what? A red flag. We are together. And I will share that with you perhaps when we come later. But I want you to just understand that marriage portrays the relationship between the church and Christ. Every home should be like God and his church. Amen? Forgiveness, mercy, love, obedience, long-suffering, patience. Those are the things that are supposed to be in marriage. I pray that as we continue through this week, we will learn. Any questions you are having, just note them down. If you give them to me early, I'll answer them before we begin the session and as we are moving on.
So invite your friends that they may not miss. Amen. This may be an experience that they need. For now, I want us to rise and pray so that I give you time to go and prepare for the evening. So the evening session begins at exactly... Yeah, so be here by that time so that we have ample time to study. We are praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we've learned this morning. As we are going to learn more during this week, may your grace be upon us. May your spirit guide us. May you enable us to have time to be here. May you lead us into all truth. For this we ask, believing and trusting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And God bless you as you go to class.